warm welcome to everyone watching with us today at all our different campuses there in Pitt Meadows, there in Strathcona and Commercial. And if you're watching online, man, you're part of our church family. So glad to have you joining us. And you may have listened also on podcasts somewhere in the world today. We're glad that you're joining us. It's Father's Day, and uh, we're going to celebrate Father's Day and look at it, reflect upon it. You know something about Father's Day? For some, Father's Day is it's a bit of a challenge. And uh, for others, it's a great day of celebration. So we start off, though, by doing something a little bit fun today. We've got a quiz for you, and uh, we want you to shout out the answer. It's very self-explanatory, but just see how well you do on this little Father's Day quiz before we get into the message, just to warm things up, open up your heart, and let's do a little quiz on Father's Day before we get started. Here we go. Let's play the quiz and shout out your answers. You guys got to shout louder than that. We're not hearing you. Oh. Come on, Pit Meadows. I can't hear you out there. You got to shout louder. Oh. I thought you knew that one, commercial. Come on, you can get this. Necktie, you guys got one, all right. <laughs> Thailand, somebody got it up there. Way to go, Strathcona. I think they got it there, Fari. That surprised some of you, come on now. Oh. All right, give yourself a hand for playing along today. There's a, a lot we can learn about Father's Day, a lot of rich history behind Father's Day, and there's a lot of interest in Father's Day. We're talking about generosity, you know, how do we be generous in homes? And we celebrate dads because dads can make a huge difference about having generosity in a home. If you happen to be a father here and you're with us today, we just want to say this message is for you. We pray that it will really encourage you and support you as you journey being a father. If you have been fathered, if you have had a dad who is good dad and supportive dad, we pray that, again, you'll just appreciate the message. And you might be listening today and... Uh, you didn't have a father, or maybe your father was, you know, it, it failed. And so this is a message that would help, hopefully, to begin fill the voids in your life. And, and other things would come along and just help you to be the best, strongest person you can possibly be. And then maybe you're a single mom raising children, and, and you don't have a father figure there. That's our prayer that as we go through this message today, it'll help show the areas where others, maybe an uncle or a grandpa or a big brother or somebody else within the church family or community could help just really fill the void so that your children could be all that they could possibly be. So on this Father's Day, for all our dads, for everybody who's caring for kids, we just want to say we salute you as we celebrate this day. In order to build a spiritual, healthy home, we need to be a couple of things. We need to be generous in provision. We need to be generous in protection. And we need to be generous in prophecy. Now, that last one might surprise you, and we're going to save it for the last so you'll understand what that means. But let's start off with generous in provision. Provision really is two words, pro and vision. You know, God's all for vision. Now, companies have visions. You'll have a vision statement. But not a lot of families have a vision statement. Fathers are there for the vision of a family. Every child has a purpose. Every child will grow up having a vision. And what dads do, they come along and they are generous in provision. They're generous in making vision happen 
for a family, and for their children. How do we do that? We do that through finances, more than this perhaps, but three for sure. It takes finances for a vision to happen. It takes time for a vision to happen. And also, for a vision to happen, you're going to have to have wisdom. So let's just talk about three things today for provision. God is for vision. Without a vision, my people? Perish. Perish. Right. So fathers help make the vision happen. One certainly is through finances. There's a verse that Paul said to Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, 8, anyone who neglects to care for his family members in need, no, it doesn't say your wants, it's the needs. There's a difference between needs and wants. And the Bible charges us as family members to care for the needs in our own home. And so one of the ways that we are for the vision, provision, is to financially be generous. Now, I think dads are naturally wired. Our DNA is to provide. It just seems to come with the territory. We're, we're naturally givers. We're naturally wanting to provide. One of the ways that we see a man get stressed out or, or really come under pressure if he doesn't have work, if it goes on for long periods of time, I, I, I've seen men struggle when they, because there's just, we're, we're wired to, to provide. We're wired to, to be out and, and provide provisions because we have a vision for our family. And so the two go together. We want to do that. We naturally want to do that. On the one end of the spectrum, you can have a father who maybe is say, I don't want to work, and he, he doesn't do any work. And then you have another, on the other end of the spectrum is a father who says, I'm just going to overindulge my children. And both of those are ditches. We want to be in the middle of the road. There's, so, there's a danger in overindulgence. One of the books that I read uh, as I was getting ready for this, it was on our bookshelf. There's a book that Pastor Cheryl had picked up earlier. It was called Raising Unselfish Children in a Self-Absorbed World. How many know that is a challenge? Raising Unselfish Children in a Self-Absorbed World by Jill Rigby. And in there, she writes about raising children and not being overindulgent with them as we are providing for them. And perhaps in a country like Canada, where we have so much, it's more of a challenge for us. Other nations, that's not the biggest challenge, but it is a challenge for us in our nation. And so she writes here, I just got to find the right page. She writes about this. She said, sadly, our self-absorbed society has told parents to help their kids feel good about themselves, that it's parents' duty to make the children happy. But underneath it all, kids don't need parents who make them happy. They need parents who make them capable. Not happy, but capable. Dr. Connie Dawson, co-author of How Much is Enough, writes, when parents give children too much stuff that costs money, do things for children they can do for themselves, do not expect children to do chores, do not have good rules and let children run the families, parents are overindulging. So on one side, yes, I'm there to provide and to be generous, but on the other hand, I have to be careful that I'm not almost too generous in causing overindulging in my family. Here are some signs of overindulgence. As you read them, he says, watch for your weak spot. Overindulging children is giving them things or experiences that are not appropriate for their age or their interests. For example, allowing a five-year-old to dress like a pop star, allowing a 12-year-old to watch an R-rated movie, removing curfew from a 16-year-old with a new driver's license. Number two, overindulgence is giving things to meet the adult's needs, not the child's. For example, a mom buying her daughter the trendiest clothes because mom believes it's a reflection of her own style. A dad giving his son the standout wheels at 16 so dad's friends as well as own son's friends will think he's the man. A parent giving his or her children the best of the best in order to make the parent look successful. Number three, overindulgence is giving too much and expecting too little. As pointed out earlier, doing and having too much too soon prevents children from maturing and reaching their potential. For example, not requiring your four-year-old to make requests using please or requiring thank you from your five-year-old for simple kindness. Giving unlimited, or for simple kid, kiddedness, it says. Giving unlimited computer time to your tween without requiring duties to be performed first. 
funding your teenager's weekends, giving him or her money for gas, movies, or other entertainment instead of expecting the teen to earn his or her own spending money. Did I find your weak spot, she writes? I admit that I slipped into overindulgence in raising my son in more than one area. They said if we don't do this, we're going to raise children that are not going to be balanced. And so as we're generous, I think in our world today, yes, we want to be generous and be providing for the vision, but at the same time, we also have to be conscious that we're not overindulgent. And in our world, that might be more of an area to work on. Just a thought in this quiet congregation. <laughs> so finances is one way we provide for the vision. Secondly, time. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 to 8, if we have the vision happen, there needs to be time. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Moses talking to the parents, talking to fathers, talking to mothers. Get them inside of you, and then get them inside of your children. Notice that, first of all, that has to be in us. If we want to pass on to our children, if we want to make the vision happen, if we want to be generous in our home, first of all, it has to be in us. Wasn't that a smart thing for Moses to say? He didn't just say, here's what you need to teach your children. He said, no, get them inside you first. You know, kids are really good at spotting a phony. They can, they can tell when, when, when mom or dad are just saying something or if they're actually living it. Because you can remember when you spotted it in your parents. Moses is saying, get it inside you. Be sincere. Be authentic. We have a generation that cries out for people to be authentic. It needs to start in our home. This is what Moses is saying here. Be authentic. Have it in your own home first. Talk about it wherever you are. Sitting at home, walking in the street, talking about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. So when we are giving instructions, when we are giving time, we can get bogged down by saying, well, I have to now schedule in time with my family. What Moses was saying here, you're already doing life together. So just for a moment, set aside your agenda when you're walking down the street, when you're going to bed, when you're having a meal, in the natural course of the day, talk about these things. Instead of saying, okay, now's the set time for five minutes, ten minutes, we're going to talk about this, and then we're done, it's over. He said, now weave it into your daily life. Man, that's good wisdom. Provision, generous in vision, it requires finances. Not just giving, though, it also requires us to be not overindulging our families. It requires wisdom there, for sure. It requires time, and not just quantity of time, it's the quality of time that we spend with them that's so important. We're going to help you with that, fathers, this weekend. And as you leave today, we have a special little package for you. We like to give all our fathers and fathers day a special gift and every year we do some brainstorming say hey what can we give our fathers one year we gave an arrow because children are like arrows in the hand of a warrior we've given away different things today we have something really special for you we're going to give you a bag of popcorn <laughs> guys are like really okay <laughs> it gets better hang in there on the back of it it says we think you're amazing pop isn't that good the team came up with that. But inside here is a movie card. It's an, actually an iTunes card. So you get an iTunes card, you get the popcorn, and then what you want to do is you want to take time and watch a movie with your family. Now, not just any movie. We put some movie examples in your notes. And so you could go to your notes, you can look at that and say, okay, here's a movie. Pick a movie. We just put a few in there. You can find one that works for you. But here's some movies. You watch them, and before you watch the movie, set it up as a kids or family. We're going to watch the movie, and then we're going to discuss a couple things about it. So look for this and look for that. And what ends up happening, you're going to do Deuteronomy chapter 6. Because it's when, in Moses was living today, he said, and when you watch a movie, talk about these things. So you find these movies that just cause you to springboard into a conversation. You're not doing it for two hours. It's just a 15-minute talk afterwards. And then I encourage the dad to say, okay, now let's pray. It's a very easy springboard 
to do some sharing. Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And then from there, you're going, okay, now let's take a moment to pray. So you're actually, we're, we're, we're wanting to give you a tool to do this step in spending time. And hopefully it leads to number three, where you can impart wisdom after watching the movie. So again, there are three things in provision. One is it does take finances to make the vision happen. You have to do that wisely. It takes time to make it happen. And the third thing, it does take wisdom. It takes teaching them for that vision to happen. Proverbs 4, 10 to 12. My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you'll have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom's ways. That means a father took time to actually teach. He took time to be with them. He took time in the lessons of life to teach. Thank God for fathers who teach their children. Our homes are the first spiritual institute that God put on this earth. Before the church, before anything else was the home. And God helped Canada to have more strong homes where dads will teach their children spiritual principles. What does that look like? It's like, again, Moses said, he said, when you're on your way, it could be driving your child to school. That may be the best conversation you have. You know, my dad did a lot of it after breakfast, or we'd do a devotion. And, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it just failed miserably, because my mind was not there. I was like, Dad, can you please get over this? I am just, I want to go play. But I remember my father talking to me when we would be driving in the truck, taking a load of grain. And just, there were moments my heart as a child was wide open. I was like a sponge, just drinking it in. There were times where he taught me how to hunt, we'd walk, and it was those moments where I just, I yearn, I, I, I miss my dad. It was those moments where he just talked to me, and it wasn't an agenda, it was just, he was just giving me wisdom. So good. We need the wisdom. We need wisdom. We need to start early. What was your favorite food? What is your favorite food? Just do a quick shout out today. Somebody tell me, what's your favorite food? Here. Steak, okay. Noodles, noodles, yeah. French fries, same way. This is an easy question, folks. Come on. <laughs> well, what's your favorite food? Popcorn, pizza, cheese. All right, you, now, now, now we're going, right? Now we're, now we're getting hungry. <laughs> this goes so good. I know the, the people there at, uh, you know, the commercial, you're close to lunchtime too. So. But at any rate, now chances are what you shouted as a food was something that you ate as a child. The verse that says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. That word train up, it's a Hebrew word that refers to the palate of your mouth. And what the midwife would do, the Hebrew midwife, when the child was born, she'd take date paste, she'd put her finger in it, and when that child was born, the newborn baby, she'd rub that on the gums of the child. And that caused the child to have an appetite. And so the child would begin to drink quicker. And that it was amazing. I don't know if they do it today, but that's where it came from. And that's the picture, the word picture for the verse. And so the midwife was intentionally triggering the right appetite for the child. And so what we do as fathers, as parents, what we want to do in wisdom is we want to trigger their appetite for the right things. And there's a season in their life where you can do this. Train up a child while he's young, when he's old. There's seasons of life. By the time they're 16 and you try to lay some of the foundational appetites, it's much more difficult. It can happen. God, many of us, we've come to know the Lord late in life and God's done an amazing work, but the best is when a, a father imparts and gives his child an appetite for the things of God at a young age, and that appetite is there. Wisdom is important provision. Time is important for it. And generous in our finances. So we're generous in provision. Number two, we want to be generous in protection. Physical and emotional protection. Now God the Father 
He's the best example of a daddy you're going to find anywhere. He's the ultimate daddy. And he is the father of the fatherless. You might be listening today or watching today, and you don't have a dad. Well, you have a spiritual father. And I believe God in his ways can fill a void if you don't have a dad. And we look to him. He is God Jehovah. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God the healer. He is God the provider. He's a God who protects. And in Psalm 91, it says this. says this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right, he rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards. His huge, outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. That's the DNA of a dad. 